breastfeeding twins. Are you pregnant with twins? Are you breastfeeding twins? Today, I am going to be discussing with a very special guest, the myths surrounding breastfeeding twins, and we are going to debunk them. So as I said, I am joined with a very special guest and her name is Pamela Armstrong, and she has breastfed three sets of twins. Hello, Pamela. Hi. Thank you so much for your time today. As you can imagine, for those viewers watching, she's a very, very busy lady and a very insightful one as well. Pamela has recently graduated as a Thompson Method educator and um, setting up shop. Am I right, Pamela? Mm -hmm. You are. It's getting set up. You it's are currently exciting. in the process. That's yeah. right. A very exciting time for you and all of our wonderful Thompson Method team. Um, we have uh, educators and practitioners near you locally. So do reach out if you'd like to learn more. But as I said, today is about myths surrounding breastfeeding twins, and we are here to debunk them. So this is part two of uh, this, this episode, I should say. Last week, I was joined with the one and only Dr. Robin Thompson, who shared from her professional um, perspective. And today we are joined by Pamela, who's going to share her personal experience as well as her professional ex expertise as well. So we're sorry we're a little bit late. Um, you know what technology is like, and we'll leave it at that. Uh, but we're very, very, very honoured to be joined by you guys today. So thank you for watching, and do let us know if you have any questions as we as we go through. Pamela, I think it's a good place to start by talking about the, the key principles of the Thompson Method and how yes. they do apply to twins, you know, both single babies and multiple babies. Um, but Dr. Robin does, of course, alongside yourself, offer support for women expecting twins, breastfeeding mm -hmm. twins. Yes. And there's a number of twins mums, aren't there, in the club, in our community. And there in are. fact, you have three sets of twins. Tell us what it's like being a mum to three sets of twins. Oh, well, it's its own special dynamic for sure. <laughs> but I do I do stick to my say, if you're going to have one set of twins, you might as well have three because they're, <laughs> they're all on equal playing field. <laughs> you got one kid to hold a little kid's hand. Everybody's equally responsible, so it's good. Well, I have, I have actually had the privilege of seeing your family in action. In a couple of Zoom calls, I've seen the older older twins help out a lot with the um, with the new twins, and it is the, the, well, I say the new twins. They're not so little anymore, are they? They're three, right? I know, they're three. Yes, <laughs> it's beautiful. It's such a lovely a lovely unit that you have, and so so nice to see everyone chip in. Large families are great fun, right? I come from one yes. myself. I am reaping the benefit of the space between my twins. My oldest set are twelve. My middle girls are eight, and then my littles are three. So. There's a wonderful dynamic between the oldest to the middle to the young. So beautiful. I, I mean, most of us watching, and um, I myself am as well, in awe of your superhuman powers. Not only are you parenting <laughs> three sets of twins and have done everything twice over, yeah, you have breastfed three sets of twins. And I can only imagine how overwhelming that must have been. And, and that's actually going to lead me to a few of our questions. So, Pamela, I really want to know about that that most common myth which we hear as single mothers as singleton mothers as well and parents and families is that you will not produce enough for two for two babies we also hear that for singletons don't we it's a common absolutely. thing we see quite a lot in the club absolutely yes i would say that um i had more than enough milk for my two two babies at a time and we had freezer stash and extra milk everywhere <laughs> But I, you know, through my three sets of twins, I really learned um, how and why, because, um, you know, with my first set of twins, they were premature and we were able to go from um, expressing and bottle feeding to exclusive breastfeeding. Um, and, but as they got older, my milk supply did dwindle and I learned that I was not eating and drinking enough. I see. Um, and of course, and you, your first set of twins were born prematurely. Is that right? That's they were, yes. Why you were introduced the bottle and and had those. Thankfully, you had those cruxes as well to sort of get you going. Um, Absolutely. And you said you learned along the way. I cannot even begin to imagine how much you've learned through oh. breastfeeding six babies. Um, <laughs> it's but true. Do, do and you each... feel you look back in hindsight like I do? Yeah. And. Um, do you feel as though from learning what you've learned from the Thompson method that you look back and think, oh, like have a, an aha moment and you think, oh, oh 
if I'd just tweaked this or gently changed that or adjusted this, then, then it would have changed everything for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yes, between my three sets, I learned that I, I needed to eat more. I needed to nourish myself more. And then for my second two sets of twins, like I did not have like an issue with milk supply until I decided to be done breastfeeding. And it just made the, the world of a difference. And, and that also rolls over into your energy as a mother and being able to parent and care for and, you know, withstand the, the ins and outs of the day. Um, if you're not nourished and, and hydrated, then you're just gonna drain yourself dry in every facet. <laughs> I think that's actually a really good advice for all of those involved, mm -hmm. involved in taking care of a baby, because you get so caught up, don't you, in, in taking care of everything, everyone else, especially those if you're watching, you've already got children and you're expecting. You yeah. just really, you kind of take that back step and you you can, you can easily forget to, to nourish yourself, to hydrate yourself. Something that is so simple, something we've done so naturally throughout our lives. Um, hi, ladies watching. Um, Teresa said, I worked in a NICU for 20 years and she says, you're so, so right. And it is, it's, it's just... It's an impossible detail that shocks you when you're pregnant. You think, oh, come on, as if I'm going to forget to eat. I mean, I know for yeah. me when I was pregnant with Jacob, I couldn't stop eating. So yeah. I <laughs> oh, I would yeah. eat a full meal. I'm talking a full meal in the middle of the night, every night for the first <laughs> oh, six weeks. Oh, don't we just love nighttime yeah. though? Yeah, it's when a good thing. <laughs> I always regret it the next day, but that me time is precious. <laughs> Yes. And my one rule, so this, this was my little thing. Actually, my mom kind of pushed me on it when I started feeding my twins, where she said, feed mom, then feed babies. So I would grab a snack or whoever was around would grab me a snack yeah. while I was breastfeeding. And, and it just had to become part of the routine. And it was a good reminder that when my babies were hungry, I, whether I was hungry or not, I should eat something. And yeah. And I, I remember actually quite often when I was breastfeeding Jacob, I would get very thirsty. And I know this is a very common thing. Breast yes. milk production is based on hormone simulation. We know that we understand that now. Because yes. thankfully, we have access to a wonderful resource of, of a wealth of information and education. But I didn't know that before. And there are lots of sayings, there's lots of advice and conflicting information out there that may, may have you believing otherwise. But, but ladies, if you want to learn how your body works to produce that precious, that very precious liquid gold, then get in touch with us because your body is very, it's very possible for you to breastfeed. It's very likely that you are able to produce unless there is a very serious underlining medical or health condition. Of course, we're all perfectly unique. Um, but yes, get in touch. It's very possible for you with twins, with multiple single babies. We've even heard stories about um, adopted babies as well, breastfeeding. So it's, it's a very magical thing that our bodies can do. Absolutely. Pamela, tandem feeding. This is the myth, by the way. Tandem feeding. It's the only way breastfeeding twins is possible. Well, tandem feeding would be the simplest way in the realm of working towards being able to breastfeed your babies totally independently from the get-go. However, you can definitely breastfeed in lots of different ways. And there's <laughs> some amazing strategies to feeding two babies at once. Um, you can feed them alternate feeding. So one baby first, then the second baby, and you just kind of go back and forth. It takes a little bit more time, but it makes it far more doable to breastfeed two babies in public where you don't have to bear all. <laughs> I think that the, the, the perfect way that, that Dr. Robbins said it last week is we have to appreciate how beautifully individual and unique our circumstances are. Absolutely. So it probably depends on, on your situation, how often you feed sure. in public. You might, yeah. you might be at home a lot more. And if you want to, some women prefer that one-on-one -on -one time. Um, some women would prefer, like you said, the, the easiness of just doing it uh, together. But some women might actually not find that easier. So sure. I think you'll agree. It totally depends on the unique circumstances and the unique baby. We all know they're unpredictable, don't we? 
<laughs> yes. But it also changes through the spectrum of their, their infancy. So yes. I found that tandem feeding when they were newborn until they were about five or six months old was fantastic. But once they started to get bigger and wiggly and able to climb around, that there were times that feeding them one at a time was far more doable oh, or or feeding them in different positions now that they can hold their head up or they can sit or they can crawl around. Like it totally can change how they are, how they're sitting um, at the breast. And so it it's not linear. <laughs> it no. is definitely dynamic. Yeah, I think you definitely need to um, accumulate some skills, don't you? But, but for those watching who are expecting twins or perhaps you have newborn baby twins now, we understand, I mean, even myself as a mom who hasn't had twins, we understand how very overwhelming and vulnerable it can it can feel for you during this, this time, especially if you're expecting twins, because you're probably hearing a lot of negativity around breastfeeding twins. You're probably hearing some horror stories. So I think our encouragement for you to take from this positive and to also go and explore women that do um, that do breastfeed twins. We've recently discovered that um, a famous singer in, in a group called Little Mix, her name is Leanne. She is still breastfeeding her one-year-old twins and has had a very successful journey. So I hope that offers some reassurance. But the key, I think you'll agree here, Pamela, is education as soon as you can get it. As much as you can get, I can hear one of the babies. Can I hear I one? Got, we've got one. <laughs> Hello. Say hi. <laughs> I'm sure she uh, her babysitters pretty <laughs> not to have one. <laughs> yeah. Oh bless. We just love seeing the babies. Okay. Showing us um, a <laughs> superpower. So what we're trying to say is um, of course have have confidence through education, but also empower yourself and take control of your journey by providing yourself with education, investing in your journey if this is what you want. And, you know, connect with us, feel reassurance. We have lots of successful stories to share with you on twins, twin mums breastfeeding successfully. And maybe they've turned around their journey as Pamela had with her first. You know, it's, it's like I said, it's an overwhelming time and it's perfectly understandable for you to feel a little bit, a little bit of doubt. So myth but, number three. Pamela, yes. Breastfeeding twins will be way too exhausting and time consuming. Well, it is time consuming and it is exhausting, but having a baby is exhausting. Being a mother is exhausting. Doesn't matter if it's one, two or more babies, you're going to be exhausted. And so setting yourself up for um, success with a support system is like so immense, immensely wonderful and helpful. So whether that's your neighbor or grandma or your husband, like there's you know, your friends, you need to be willing to ask for help um, is probably the first thing that I would say. And the second thing would be that, you know, we, I, I see in our culture that it's like, well, I want my husband to be able to feed or I want somebody else to be able to feed the baby for me. And there might be situations that that's totally necessary and, and definitely helpful. But at the same time, um, I do think that let mom feed the babies and let dad or whoever else be the one to settle them back to sleep or make the next meal and let mom go back to sleep. That's a um, great tip. And I think that that's the wonderful um, insight to your journey there is how you were able to have, have that support system and really utilize it and have confidence in yourself, being able to feed babies. And we do, we see this often. We have a post floating around in our free community how can other members of the family, partners, dads, grandmas, parents, how can they bond with baby? Because they're so worried they can't if they're not able to feed. Now, one of my closest friends is pregnant. She's expecting and dad has asked to, to bottle feed for that exact reason. It's a great conversation to have. Maybe mum wants to combi feed. Maybe she's considering combi feeding if she's having twins. And that's fantastic because it's ultimately your choice, right? Your body, your yeah. baby, your choice. And that is what we celebrate as Absolutely. part of the Thompson Method. And as Pamela said, if that's not something you want to do and you, you do just want to say, look, let mum feed the baby, then do that and, and be proud to do that. It's, it's a big job. It's a prideful job. And we have plenty of resources to help you along e either way, whatever you choose is right for you in your unique journey. And also it's about informed, informed choices and making an informed decision for yourself as well. Because if you have the knowledge, 
you mm -hmm. have access to the education you can make an informed decision based on what you know rather what then what's being told to you like you said with bottle feeding as well because there can sometimes be more complications involved when you introduce a bottle or supplement or anything else along the array of decisions that we have to make <laughs> in For our sure. journey as mums well, and it's so important when you're expecting twins to have that education ahead of time, because um, when you're in the medical system and if your babies are premature, or they end up in the hospital. It is kind of default to go to a bottle. It's default to go to supplementing. It's default to go there. And and you have to be willing and wanting to stand up to protect your breastfeeding abilities um, as you go forward. And, you know, it it is totally possible to go from one to the other. My premature babies were on NG tubes when they were first born. And then we went through this whole process of going from tube feeding to bottle feeding. We use nipple shields, but within, within, you know, a few weeks time, we were able to, we were able to, you know, get ourselves on track with breastfeeding and, and we didn't go back, but I had to, I had to push for that. I had to want that. And I had to be prepared and educated enough to say, no, this is how we're going to do it. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, sometimes it isn't, it isn't just the education or the lack thereof. It can be, it can be environmental factors, people influencing you. It can be, you just exhausted. You might be recovering from something yourself. You might have poor health yourself. And, and one of the yeah. comments that just came in from Teresa is, is so true in investing in yourself, investing in your health. Um, that, that, that is what's key here because especially with twins as well, we obviously, we appreciate that, that breastfeeding motherhood, having a new baby is extremely exhausting anyway. Um, yes. Going back to myth three, <laughs> breastfeeding twins will be time consuming and it will be exhausting. But I suppose it depends on what you want to do. And we, we all fall into our routines anyway. We're very strong. We're women. We're strong. We're capable. And it's important to constantly remind ourselves of that throughout the journey. You know, there's always different bumps in the road, isn't there, Pamela? I mean, you've Absolutely. Got and three <laughs> there's, there's, it doesn't end. Oh, yes. It's constantly <laughs> challenging and beautiful equally. So, yeah, I think um, I think that's a great conversation to bring to light. So I think that's a powerful message. Thank you, Pamela. Yes. So myth four breastfeeding twins will be too painful. It's going to be way too painful. Well, there's lots of women that do experience pain. And I think that, you know, when breastfeeding is so overwhelming with two babies, of uh, you know, their individual needs and what's going on. Um, the biggest thing that I see is that how you set up to breastfeed your twins um, will indicate um, how successful you can be going forward in avoiding pain. And it's kind of that combination between getting set up so that you're able to sit properly and hold them well so that they're at the right height. And knowing how to do this, having that support how. in the decisions yes. you're making. I've seen so many, um, so many comments and questions um, asking for guidance in the club recently where you're able to actually help these women and they're saying you know i'm expecting twins and just that little bit of love and reassurance between you a bit back and forth conversation i can only begin to imagine how reassuring that must be for women expecting twins because although we have an incredible amount of, of resources videos and and things to get through in the online program there is also you <laughs> you know i'm here loads more of the team coming through now with the experience of twins like this lovely lady here teresa has experience in the NICU. we have such a huge array of women with backgrounds and, and a variety of experiences as well and and that's very special i think you'll agree being able to also offer that for women must be amazing for you oh it absolutely is it absolutely is and it's just very small changes small adjustments fine tuning that makes all the difference mm -hmm. and you just have to do it twice and and you know troubleshooting how you hold two babies and make sure that they're latched well and that they're they've come to the breast in a way that that they can um not cause nipple trauma and damage yes is and i think that once you you sort of um, implement the key principles of the thompson method yes. i think you really understand how simple it is and of course there are the other obvious things 
that we know now, um, which mm. I wish I'd known in hindsight. But this even applies to singleton babies as well. It's understanding how important your decision making is during labour and being informed, understanding your rights, um, especially during those first three golden hours, having an understanding of those three golden hours and, yeah. and what to do in the situation where you can't breastfeed baby or even hold baby like you weren't able to in those first three hours. And the things that you can do to really get support and education behind you as you embark on this new journey, um, twins or not, I think, um, yeah. like you said, understanding the symmetry of breastfeeding with the Thompson method, understanding the gentle, the very, very slow and gentle pace that you can go at and how you are in control. Um, and I think I think knowing that and understanding to say no when it doesn't feel right, especially to forceful techniques, which I should imagine is um, more so common with twins. Would I be right in assuming that? Um, yes, probably, because usually that first breastfeed is challenging and, mm. you know, mom is tired and exhausted and yeah. you kind of can lay back and let whoever help your babies come to the breast, you know, and you need extra hands, you need, you need support. You can't really do that first breastfeed on your own. And I think that's why consent is so important because you yeah. can ask and you can be in control of the hands that are touching you rather than the force. For sure. That's so true. So breastfeeding doesn't have to be painful. I guess ultimately that's not. how we're going to bust this myth. Yeah. <laughs> that's how we'll debunk it. Even yeah. with twins, it doesn't have to be painful. It might be. It depends on the unique circumstance. Dr. Robin reminded me of that last week. Um, yeah. It can be, but it doesn't need to be. And there no. are resources and help available to guide you um, if you find yourself worried or in an experience or a situation where you are experiencing pain. Nipple trauma is the number one reason um, in Dr. Robin's research why women are forced to end breastfeeding before they want to. And it's also a huge factor a huge consideration um, in why women choose not to try breastfeeding because they've heard awful or seen awful pictures or heard awful stories um, around breastfeeding. So please don't don't suffer in silence worrying about that. Reach out and we would be more than happy to connect with you. Absolutely. So Pamela, I'd love I love that we're covering this next one, which is bottle feeding is the easiest option because I know you have experience with both. So there we go. Myth number five, bottle, bottle feeding is the easiest option. So I found that I disliked bottle feeding twins because it was actually very difficult to manage two babies and two bottles uh, mm. when they were having a screaming meltdown to feed me now. <laughs> <laughs> which happens often when they're little. Yeah, it does. <laughs> It truly does. We'll be honest. <laughs> um, and so I found that to be so challenging without having two people there or having, you know, a special setup in order to juggle all this. And I found that to be quite stressful. Um, never mind all the extra dishes. <laughs> yeah, that's something that I mean, I was very fortunate. I didn't I didn't have to bottle feed. Um, however, there was a point where I almost did. And um, yeah. I do look back and think, you know, mums that bottle feed are superheroes in, the, in their own way because they Absolutely. have to sterilise and some of them make formula and they have this extra responsibility, which, I mean, mums rock, don't they? Mums and dads and they parents sure and carers, do. they just rock. So They yeah. endure a lot. <laughs> so you actually found the positioning and the juggling harder with bottle feeding didn't find it I an did. easier option. I did. Yes, absolutely. And just the timing of like, oh, my breast milk's frozen and I got to get it thawed uh -huh. and they're screaming. And just there was a lot more logistical things that I found to be super challenging. And I, I was like, nope, I would rather just breastfeed. And so that is where like my husband and I kind of found the groove of like, okay, it is way more efficient for me to breastfeed. And for him, you know, he would sleep on the floor at my feet. Yes, you've told <laughs> in me the this living before. room. Beautiful. <laughs> and if I needed his help, I would kick him and he would get up and burp a baby or change a diaper. I'd make sure he was awake first. <laughs> but yeah, we we can't stress how how very, very important having that support is. But if you don't have that support, I mean, like I said, mums, superheroes. We don't absolutely. need to have it. It doesn't, it's not something that that is a necessity to breastfeeding. Um, yeah. But it obviously goes a long way, as as does help in general in life anyway. Um, yes. But yeah, I, I feel very fortunate to have had that support system as well from my partner. 
Yes. Um, and, and there is, there's forms of support in, in lots of different family members. Um, amen, sister, Jenna says. <laughs> yes. And also we have Teresa. I'll show this comment on the screen. She said, knowledge is power. How true is that? Yeah. How it's much true. more powerful can we be and feel um, when we're coming from a place of knowledge, from a place of education? I'm so yeah. grateful that I landed on the Thomas Method page and was able to educate myself just Absolutely. in the right time. So I just want to remind women that are watching that we fully support every woman's right to choose how they feed their baby. You might be here because you're considering breastfeeding. You might not be considering breastfeeding, but you're curious or you might really have your heart set on it. Um, and it's important to explore the idea of breastfeeding twins um, or singletons, breastfeeding in general, um, to, to not leave it to chance. Because, yes, it is a very natural thing to do, but it sometimes doesn't feel that way right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. It can be a steep learning curve for all parties involved. <laughs> yeah, and, and actually I have I have met women that have said, oh, it was easy. No, it, it came very natural, but I've definitely, absolutely 100% met more women that found it challenging um, at different stages than I have women that breeze through it. So I think that, um, you know, it's okay to assume that having, having that knowledge will help because it most definitely will. You can never know too much and um, knowledge is power so thank you Teresa I could not agree more so I just want to uh reiterate just in case you've joined just now that the key principles of the Thompson method do not just apply to the straightforward the 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 non-c-section the natural births <laughs> there are uh, so many backgrounds and uh, experiences and journeys that we have supported and love to share so let us know if you're uh, planning a c-section we have information to support you through that. Nick, you baby, like Pamela said, there is so many things you could do to put in place. The, the key yeah. principles of the Thompson Method apply to both singletons and multiples. And Dr. Robin does offer support, um, probably from the very, very special lady you're seeing right here. And, um, and just before we go, I just want to let everyone know that the Pam, Pam Armstrong is now a qualified Thompson Method educator. And um, would you like to say where you're from? Huh? Yes. So I live in Red Deer, Alberta, Canada, and I live here with my family and we are, yeah, I'm excited to get going with my business and, and helping women uh, prepare for breastfeeding and yeah. particularly women who are expecting twins. Because yeah, it's your passion, whether, of course. Whether you've had a baby before or not, you've probably never breastfed twins before. So we yeah, are... unless they've got three sets like you. Right? They... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, let us know your stories, ladies. Have you have you breastfed twins? Are you watching this just to look back and, and sort of remember those days? Um, and and it's, it's great, isn't it, how different our stories are? But um, Pamela is, is just embarking on her own unique journey um, of helping women expecting twins or breastfeeding twins. And the Thompson Method Academy, which is our new education system led by Dr. Robin Thompson herself and our very wonderful Rachel Austin, midwife. Um, they have done something really special here and the likes of Pamela, Kelly, Sarah, and lots of our other senior members are now out there in your communities, helping women to prepare and feel confident and hand, take back that power um, of, of birthing and breastfeeding. I mean, in the hospital system, right? That's that's what it ultimately sometimes does come down to. Yes, it's it true. Does. So, Pamela, you're the expert of breastfeeding twins. Any last words for our twin mamas out there? Oh, just um, bring a community around yourself of people. Let them in your space and let them help you. Let them see the good, the bad, the ugly, because they will help carry you through the the hard, exhausting days of having twins and and you'll find yourself to be successful on the other side. Absolutely. Well, there you go. Uh, a, a very special message from a special lady who has more than enough experience, I think, to feel confident in sharing that message with you. Thank you so much to everyone who has watched today. We're going to be back next week with another wonderful story from one of our members. Also, do check out the page, like and share as much as you can so that we can collectively help as many women as possible. And I'll also pop Pamela's page down below in the comments if you want to check her out. And if you are in Canada, what a very lovely place you are then reach out to, to Pam and, and say hi. Pamela, thank you so much for your time as always and best wishes to everyone watching. Thank you very much for having me. Bye ladies. <laughs>